हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक टू धर्म जियोस्फियर टुडे आई विल बी इंटरेक्टिंग विद यू ऑन द रिलेवेंस मोमेंट दैट इज द वेलफेयर ज्योग्राफी एंड द रेडिकल ज्योग्राफी सो देयर वाज अ वाइड स्प्रेड रिसर्जेंस ऑफ द पॉलिटिकल रेडिकलिज्म इन द मिड 60स इन द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स uh it was followed by a, a lot of uh, simmering heat and uh, mass demonstrations against the uh, policies of uh, the government both inside and uh, outside and uh, politically defunct uh, um, socialistic parties uh, uh, got uh, uh, revived and showed their intentions of uh, going against the um, government uh, policies and it was followed by um, mass uh, demonstrations uh, in almost every part of the um, american cities so uh, there were many reasons to uh, this kind of uh, political uh, radicalization and uh, the uh, mass movement uh, spread across uh, the american cities and uh, these causes uh, uh, can be uh, summed up as uh, follows the first was of course uh, regarding the uh, great uh, um, economic uncertainty uh, which was uh, um, widely prevalent at that time uh, in spite of uh, um, the uh, revival of uh, economy uh, after two decades of uh, the uh, world wars uh, there was a sudden uh, economic slump which was um, hurting not only just all the citizens but also the youth at large so there was a uh, um, kind of a uh, um, uh, pause where uh, um, people um, uh, stood by and started taking uh, the stock of uh, the policies of the government uh, what were their um, successes and more importantly how all and what were their main failures so the um, general uh, <clears throat> the uh, pros- uh, prosperity uh, that came about after the uh, world war uh, it was felt by uh, many sections of society that it was not shared uh, amongst the uh, many uh, sections of the society so which uh, greatly agitated them and uh that uh, agitation slowly grew into a civil rights uh, movement spread across uh, like wildfire throughout the many american cities but the um, the major or the underlying uh, cause um, for this kind of a civil rights movement uh, is uh, the vietnam war where uh, many of the uh, workers and students and many sections of the society felt that this policy of uh, america at that time was uh, not only imperialistic but it was also anti freedom so uh, attention started uh, getting refocused on the problems and the dispoliation of the physical environment uh, which america at that time uh, created by uh, allowing unrestricted uh, profit maximization through their economic policies this badly uh, hurt the uh, middle class and the working class and they could not take it any more so uh, this forced a kind of a reassessment uh, even in the academics by uh, looking at the um, objectives of uh, the social sciences and sciences and uh, also the uh, humanities so uh, this continued uh, uh, also uh, with reference to the uh, man and the future uh, species of uh, uh, the man uh, and then this indirectly in fact brought in as a kind of a social revolution and which further led into a radical uh, revolution so um, under these circumstances perceptible change uh, had come up with the themes of uh, um, uh, the uh, social uh, geography human geography and other disciplines changed uh, from uh, being simply related to uh, 
location of supermarkets and super highways to poverty and uh, race relations. So a lot of uh, new and uh, important techniques like the multivariate analysis of uh, the area for measuring the economic wealth and uh, also came up and uh, studies were related to the physical health of uh, the environment down uh, and kind of medical geography also uh, sprang up. And then uh, indices like the level of living index started uh, getting into focus uh, for uh, regional uh, delimitation, etc. And then uh, there was also preferences being given uh, to the uh, welfare indicators or wherever uh, the space related geography was being done. So uh, these are the main reasons which I uh, summed up after a, a lot of effort by referring to uh, several books, uh, the three among uh, which I have always been uh, referring to. So kindly remember those reasons, these underlying causes, these undercurrents for uh, um, welfare uh, geography and uh, the radical geography. This uh, otherwise uh, uh, sporadic moment got a, a great fillip and uh, impetus uh, through the uh, mm, a beautifully uh, written uh, book uh, by um, Zomansky called The Role of uh, Geography in the Great Transition. So this book uh, actually uh, was so forceful uh, and appealed to the people in such a way that it actually uh, identified the momentous agenda for the uh, human geography at that time. So, he, um, uh, Zamansky appealed to the uh, geographers and scholars at that time that the um, present policy being adopted by the policy makers and the administrators of uh, uh, the current growth of um, current growth syndrome uh, was uh, going to bring unprecedented uh, trouble and uh, um, totally uh, take the economy uh, out of the main rails and uh, he cautioned the uh, geographers that uh, this is the time for you all to uh, assemble and uh, bring your thoughts together. So in this process he uh, identified three different roles uh, for the geographers, one was a diagnostic role wherein uh, the impact of population on resource was to be assessed in uh, terms also of uh, the environmental pollution and the degradation of land etc. And the um, second was uh, that the geographers should act like uh, profit, uh, uh, profits that they not only project but they should also be able to forecast the um, economic consequences of uh, whatever policies are being undertaken at that time. And the uh, um, third one was that the geographer should play uh, the role of an architect in bringing out the blueprints for uh, the uh, future which uh, can easily be used by the policy makers and the administrator when they uh, plan out or roll out the economic policies for the countries at large. And then, uh, so this um, uh, paper uh, uh, of uh, Zomansky gave voice to the uh, national uh, conscience and so much so that uh, uh, there was so much of uh, um, brainstorming and discussion uh, with reference to uh, the various issues highlighted by this uh, paper. So eventually a uh, general for the social movement um, was uh, <coughs> uh, formed and then uh, this general accepted articles from various uh, authors and geographers. This general was named as an antipode. So uh, this was a time when after the general started uh, spreading various articles regarding this social movement, it all the uh, mm, American society with reference to the geographical realm almost became a melting point and then um, it started uh, the uh, great uh, radical uh, revolution. So this uh, social movement uh, in uh, geography manifested uh, basically into two approaches. One was the uh, liberal approach and the other was the radical approach. So the uh, li uh, liberalism or the liberal approach uh, which was uh, in vogue at that time basically was uh, the uh, democratic capitalism uh, with a very strong <laughs> and commitment towards uh, removing the 
inequality is faced by um, the people in various sections of the society and uh, it also stood for um, ensuring a minimum standard of uh, living by the state intervention and through intervention of state policies by for removing those inequalities and bringing them all on the same page at the same level and then it also involves the uh, liberal view also involved mapping of uh, the uh, human welfare and the human welfare uh, projects and, and uh, proposals in at three different levels to meet the physical needs to meet the cultural needs and also to meet the higher needs where once a minimum standard of uh, uh, income has been uh, received by the citizen he will be able to uh, pursue his uh, higher needs of uh, uh, looking into uh, luxurious items etc and then um, one of another very interesting uh, aspects of uh, the uh, liberal approach was that it was a key to and it was very similar to the or a very contemporary um, concept uh, related to the uh, regional concept so in this way uh, uh, it was able to um, uh, use the century uh, petty forces which were coming together to throw away the uh, centrifugal forces leading which were leading to the inequalities in the society at that time so that is broadly about six points uh, related to the uh, liberalistic view of uh, the um, social movement the other is uh, radical unfortunately here since marxism was not so much prevalent in the american society in the way radicalism uh, took over in uh, the american um, many places in america was uh, rather very uh, slow and uh, it took a lot of time to actually uh, come into uh, place however um, then once it came into place uh, uh, david harvey uh, took over and for him uh, he appealed to the people that the only way to uh, address the issue of uh, get out or what we call as the slums uh, is uh, by um, preventing um, the market mechanism as the uh, primary regulator in all those uh, economic uh, dealings so he uh, but however uh, many geographers at that time uh, though they rallied with the idea of what david harvey gave at that time they believed that marxism is not a, a panacea or a solution for all the uh, problems particularly in a pluralistic society so they said that uh, apart from uh, just looking at uh, marxism alternative uh, <clears throat> ideas th theories and thoughts should also uh, be looked into um, before uh, discarding them and before trying them out so uh, this was the feeling at that time so this is the basic difference between uh, what the, how the uh, uh, liberals uh, of the social movement thought and how the radicals have uh, thought about this social revolution movement and now i will show you um, some slides where you can remember more clearly the uh, and more concretely the various points and the differences between the um, how the liberals thought and how the radicals thought mm, this is another very important uh, topic uh, you should not uh, um, miss out on this so now uh, we see the uh, basic and subtle differences between the uh, liberals approach or the welfare approach and the radical approach in the relevance movement so all this uh, we have already discussed so we'll straight go to the um, so the um, social relevance movement in geography was uh, manifested in two different sets of approaches the liberals and the radical thinkers so the former uh, stream supported the policy of uh, incremental change uh, within the system whereas the radical or the later group of scholars held on to the view that nothing short of revolutionary socialism should create a just society of the modern uh, capitalist and corporate state 
So the uh, um, liberal stream or the relevance movement um, was a combination of belief in democratic capitalism alongside a strong commitment to minimizing social and uh, the territorial inequalities in the levels of human well-being. And it represented commitment to ensure a certain minimum standard of living through the state intervention to the less privileged sections of the society. So, and then it involved mapping of women welfare, uh, which became a major uh, theme of research. So the concept of welfare was divided into three sets of variables so to facilitate its measurement and mapping. Uh, this included the physical needs, the cultural needs and the higher need. The physical needs uh, included nutrition, shelter and health, whereas the cultural needs included education, leisure, recreation, security, etc. Of course, the higher needs uh, that could be purchased with the surplus income. And the central premise to create uh, uh, the uh, liberal movement was uh, public awareness since to be aware of the problems and their complexity should be included as a part of a sensitivity in the citizenry itself. So in an uh, important textbook entitled, entitled Human Geography, a Welfare Approach, David Smith attempted, attempted to restructure human geography around the theme of uh, welfare, which according to him provides an integrating focus for a more relevant human geography. So the welfare theme also provided a com com contemporary equivalent to the regional concept which has been for so long uh, mm, appealing to the um, citizens uh, in geography. And the focus provided a centripetal force to counter the centrifugal tendencies in the study of human existence. Uh, so welfare geography um, corresponded to the general shift in the societal perspective from the narrow economic criteria of development and progress to the broader aspects of quality of life. So the welfare geography addresses address the question of redistribution in spatial context and uh, inevitably concerned with issues of inequity and social uh, justice in the distribution of uh, the public funds, or the public goods rather. So the issues involved in the study of welfare problems extend beyond the limits of a single discipline so that the welfare approach logically requires a much holistic social science perspective wherein the other disciplines like the economic, social and political factors are also included to make it much more broad based and be able to attend to the human uh, problems uh, much more effectively. So another important theme of uh, study under the revived social relevance perspective was and continues to be the concern for environmental problems. So these included problems of environmental degradation, conservation and management. And considerable interest was generated in the study of tourism as well and the other recreational facilities and the effect of such recreational activities on the quality of the local environment. Coming to the uh, radical or the Marxist uh, stream, uh, actually Marxist uh, um, ideas or ideologies was not uh, so much of a tradition in the American social science for a long time and the rise of a very genuinely radical perspective in that country was a very delayed process. So the first conscious attempt to radicalize human geography research was uh, pioneered by the American geographer William Bunch. Uh, you may recall uh, that um, we had discussed about his book, The Theoretical Geography, uh, when we were uh, uh, dealing with the other concepts of uh, geography. So this book induced geographers to take expeditions to the poorest and the most depressed areas with the view to obtaining unbiased first-hand information about them. So uh, the participatory uh, fieldwork was encouraged to prepare geographer to take planning with the people rather than planning for them. So however, uh, except for a few articles and in the um, Antipope Journal, it did not materialize uh, much. So, but the actual breakthrough for Marxist thinking in geography came when David Harvey 
uh, view that the only way of understanding ghetto or the slum areas is by eliminating the market mechanism as the primary regulator of land use. So Hindi views, uh, uh, a Marxist approach to the study of uh, social reality offered the soundest basis for critical examination of the uh, deleterious consequences of the capitalist system of the social organization. More importantly, Harvey rejected the uh, more famous Kohan's uh, um, concept um, that is uh, on uh, the scientific development and its central premise that progress in science is independent of the enveloping material conditions obtaining in the society in question. So in Harvey's view, the Marxian theory did provide the key to understanding capitalistic production from the position of those not in control of the means of production. So the geographer can no longer remain a detached observer. Instead, he becomes politically more aware and gets actively involved in the creation of a more just society. So radical uh, geography now became progressively more and more identified uh, with the Marxist approach to the human problems. But uh, in spite of this, uh, you should understand that uh, Marx may have been able to dissect the operation of a capitalist economy, polity and society that we so often may miss today. But it does not hold the key to every modern problem, in, particularly in the complex pluralistic societies. Social science, therefore, um, and its research must remain open to alternative perspectives, which must not be condemned without giving them a try. So guys, um, that is all the subtle differences between the um, uh, liberalistic and the welfare view and the uh, radical approach in this uh, socialist movement. So um, just note down the important points of difference. So whenever one may come, has come, may come as a short note, try to use the points of the other, make a comparison. So it gives an impression to the examiner that you have uh, a grip on uh, what you have studied and uh, you are able to write a well-rounded answer. So that is all as far as the uh, social um, uh, movement is concerned or the relevance movement is concerned which has the welfare and the radical arms uh, just go through it is sim simple and straightforward. I gave you about 12 points uh, or the 12 causes of why uh, the relevance movement had sprung up. So just remember that from now we will now move on to the modern geography. Uh, that's again another very interesting topic and a very relevant one too. So guys, uh, stay safe, study well, stay focused and we'll catch up soon. Bye.